Okay, um, today we have a very special session. Um, I'm going to start with the video. Everyone seen, sorry, anyone who's not seen Friends here? Friends, the serial Friends? Anyone who doesn't see Friends? Very good! <laughs> We've got an episode from Friends for today. Lights. Lights. Yeah, yeah. Is it playing? Sound, sound? What happened? Forgive me. Uh, one second. Huh? Just go to library. Sorry. Just go to library. On. Library? Yeah, on top, on top. Yeah, that one. Yeah, play. Sorry, sorry about this. Uh, full screen. Yeah. Volume. Bring it across and end. I'm Ross. He's after me. Hi, Ross. Hi, Ross. Take the Emily. Take the Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Caroline. Oh, sorry, I forgot to put the lights on. No, the serial's over. <laughs> okay. So that was funny, huh? Eh? Okay, good. None of us said it was funny, but all of us were laughing. Correct? <laughs> sorry. Okay, so uh, I have a question. Actually, Ross did a fantastic talk there. He was, he was brilliant the way he was acting. But I have a question. If you were Emily, what would you have felt if I was real? I want answers. If you were Emily, what would you have felt? Sorry? Oh, it's louder, please. Betrayed. Betrayed. I'm confused somewhere. Heartbroken. Heartbroken. Shocked. Shocked. Angry. Humiliated. Wow. Wow. Wasted. Wow. What else? Devastated? Yeah. You know, uh, I don't blame Ross for that character because uh, that's just the result of the culture.
culture that they are living in. You know, it's just a result of that. You go from one apartment to the other. It's ironical that they showed that. They made it funny. But that's the truth. That could happen to you and me. Don't think it's only, it's only friends. Or oh, that's the use. No, 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 it could be you and me. Do we want that for our lives? Do we want to be on the earth <coughs> thinking about someone else where our heart and our commitment is somewhere else and we're looking at that person? Think about what Ross would have felt if you were Ross. You would have been, you would have been hitting yourself. Not as shameless as this guy was. You would have been really upset. Let me share something about... Okay, before I go there, how many years does a priest take to prepare for priesthood? 10, 14, yeah, goes from 8 to 14, yeah, it's around 8 to 14. How many years do we take to prepare for marriage? <laughs> Hardly any. Why does the priest take so long to prepare? Because that's what he's going to be doing for the rest of his? Are you going to be married for the rest of your life? <laughs> Let me share something from my life. I was looking for love or companion or someone to go out with uh, when I was very young. Uh, seventh standard. In India we call it seventh standard. Now you may call that puppy love or whatever but I started very early. I was inspired by my siblings, the elder siblings who already had girlfriends and boyfriends and that looked very attractive. And then you had the movie Grease. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Everything in your world is that guy. I have to get, I mean for me it was a girl. <laughs> I had to get that girl in my life. So that became my, my, you know, I was after that. I was good at other stuff also, like I did sports and all that stuff. But this became my life and I, I went with it as a vengeance. So I tried to woo the girls and eventually from the seventh standard, only in my second year of college did I manage to have a girlfriend. I mean, she actually said yes. So in the second year of college, when I got this girlfriend, she became my wife. Everything else just took the second priority. She became everything. I was living, literally living in I would go back home to sleep. Otherwise, my mother would have kicked me out. So I had to go back home to sleep. But I was literally living there. And it was eating, sub, one way, every TV, everything was there only. Even if she was busy, I was in the house. And my mom would ask me, I mean, what's happening? What are you doing with your life? And I said, listen, don't tell me what to do. I know what I'm doing. You won't know when you are from those... Uh, now you don't know how things are. So don't, don't tell me anything. I went on. Six months down the line, I get a note from her through a friend of mine. See, I... I cut off all my other friends except the friends that she hung out with, okay? So we had friends, but uh, I got a note saying, I don't want to have this relationship anymore, I don't want to see your face again. And I was like, what? You know, I was, I was devastated. I didn't know what to do, I went mad. Because you know, I built this castle and I've been looking at this castle for six months and hoping that I'll be living in it one day. And suddenly the castle just... Vanishes and like, I don't have anything around me. I'm just done. So I don't know why I just don't, I was just completely broken. Completely broken. From there on, it didn't stop me. I turned to the Lord at that time, at that point in my life. But this urge was so strong that even though, even though I was opening my heart to the Lord, I somehow kept going on this way of looking for a companion in my life. And fast forward, when I got married, by the time I reached uh, Sandra, which was a few years back, I was so used up because I was rejected, broken, rejected, broken. I got attached, broken, attached, broken. And it was so painful that I didn't have much to give this girl. I really didn't have much. If it wasn't for her patience and it wasn't for God's healing, our marriage would have been online today. 
This is the truth about my life. It can be any of us. Okay, I'm not trying to put the sob story. This is the truth about me. I was so broken that I really needed Jesus to come and just heal me because I couldn't. I couldn't. I didn't. I forgot. And I, I mean, I just said, like, enough. How much am I going to do? How much? The reason why I share this is because there was a time when someone had told me, take it slow, focus on your career. My mother, she thought I had a lot of potential. She thought I was smart, as in I could study. I don't know where she got an impression from. Anyways, she wanted me to be a CA. <laughs> the thought of a CA only. But she would tell me, listen, focus on your studies now. This is not the time for all this. And I would say, listen, I know better. Today, I want to do CA. Not CA, but I want to do another professional course. Foolish, wasted my time. This is why I tell you is because I didn't listen at that time when someone told me this. Yeah? All of us want to be happy and God wants us to be happy here. He really wants us to have a great marriage. He wants us to be really happy. My coach, football coach, I love playing football. My coach said, he said, he used to always tell us, he said, listen, if the way you practice now, so if you're practicing a particular kick and if you don't practice it well, that's exactly the way you're going to play in your game. Okay? So the way you prepare for your game is the way you're going to perform. In marriage, the way you prepare is the way you're going to. Okay? So I'm not saying practice certain things that are allowed only in marriage. Okay? <laughs> be careful of that. Whatever we share today, uh, most of it is going to be from a website called courtshipnow.com. Yeah, it's a lady, her name is Carmen Mark Cox. She's spoken at various events and um, pro-life rallies and EWTN, she's spoken on Life for the Rock. Some of us may know about that. Pure fashion shows. And she's written two novels, uh, two novels, uh, fiction novels on Catholic romance. So it's fabulous, you know, you're sort of reading that booms and booms and all that rubbish. You can read this uh, stuff here, which is really good, okay? Yeah, so, you want to get married. Most of us here want to 